so I'm Neil Sweeney. I'm the founder of, uh, of Freckle IoT. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Freckle or not familiar with Freckle, um, we're a data measurement company operating globally where our core business is really to provide uh, attribution and measurement services across various different channels. Uh, about a year ago, um, actually on May 25th, not coincidentally, which is the first day of GDPR, uh, we launched a new product. Uh, that product is called Killy, K-I-L-L-I. Uh, you can download it in the iOS, Android store uh, in a variety of countries. And we'll take maybe a step back and kind of rather than go through a long presentation because I know like we're a little bit behind, uh, maybe I'll just sort of frame up kind of the rationale as to why we decided to build Killy in the first place and why we think um, moving forward, Killy is uh, the potential solution for a lot of the conversations that have been going on today. So um, I don't know how many of the people in the audience here were at this event last year. Um, I don't know, maybe a show of hands of people who were here last year. So maybe 15%, 20%. Um, the, the one thing I can, I can tell you is that last year versus this year, a lot of the companies that we're presenting today we're presenting last year, and if you saw kind of the evolution of the progress that we've made in this ecosystem, it's like, it's compounding. Um, so it's like, forget about it. Um, so congrats to everybody who's been actually innovating in the space. And I think what we've also seen is that if you're in the programmatic environment uh, where you're bidding on inventory, the blockchain's got that part figured out. I think we've got a lot of smart people operating um, really interesting companies to solve transparency, compliance, all these various different co uh, components. I think for us, we took a bit of a different approach inside of Freckle. Um, we think that while solving issues around transparency, fraud, et cetera, are all absolutely important, um, we know that every brand, agency, platform, hedge fund, crypto exchange, every single one of these platforms and companies relies on data. And as a whole, I think the industry has been conditioned to decision on top of data on this understanding that data is endless and da data is cheap. The reason it's cheap is because the overall consumer has really no understanding of kind of how that data is being used. Um, this is a problem going forward because while we all rely on data, um, that is fundamentally changing. So um, it's great that we're actually solving issues around transparency, but the question that I kind of pose to the room, and I think when we come back next year and we measure sort of the progress of this ecosystem, the one thing that I think you're gonna see the biggest progress in is this concept around consent management. Consent management will be the biggest theme um, going forward in this industry, including the blockchain. I mean, both the ad tech, martech, and blockchain industry. Consent management is by far and away the biggest uh, theme, and there's a reason for that. Um, we decision on top of data. Data is a manifestation of identity. We talk very flippantly about things like data lakes uh, and first party data. Uh, we've seen from the guys at SRACs and others where like the reality is, is first party data suggests you own it, but in reality, you don't. You're one step removed from it. The data is actually owned one step below you. It's actually owned at the consumer level. Uh, we know this from the government's perspective that this is pissing them off. And so as a result of that, across the world, you're seeing um, the implementation of legislation um, originating, obviously, in Europe, but manifesting here in the United States. People talk about CCPA, which is the California Consumer Privacy Act. Very few people acknowledge that there's 12 states that have various different levels of privacy legislation already on the table. This is, this is going to turn into a logistical gong show over the next 12 months as you decision and use data you are going to have to actually track where that actually data is originating from to no in order to make sure that it is actually compliant moving forward. So while we're all building solutions on top of that, I think what we feel is missing um, in the entire framework is a consent management layer and a consent management layer that can feed a real-time engine, that can feed an exchange, that can feed a social network, et cetera. And that's really what we set out to do. Um, and the reality is we face the same problem in our core business as really as everybody else. Um, Freckle, as I mentioned before, um, we don't sell media, we're a measurement solution. We measure the effectiveness of your media in driving people into locations. We do that across every channel. So desktop, mobile, social, search, TV, radio, out of home. How do we do it? We use data. We use data from 200 million devices. We collect location data. Technically, it all obviously applies from a, it, it complies from a privacy point of view, but when we looked forward to the future, we used a very simple analogy, which is if we were building a house or we were a house builder and we lose access to wood, 
how are we going to run our product? And so like any good business, we set out to really try to set us to try to figure out how do we mitigate risk in our own business. And so we did that by actually starting to think about, all right, if there's 200 million devices inside of our graph, how do we make these 200 million devices compliant? And how do we not only make them compliant for Europe, how do we make them for compliant for California? How do we make them compliant for Canada? How do we make them compliant for all the markets that we're in? It's really fucking hard, to be honest. It's really hard. But I think for us, when we launched Killy as a starting point on May 25th, it was with that in mind. So if you go into the application, it looks really linear on the surface. Um, it's a consumer-facing application. You can download it today. Um, simplistically, what it allows you to do is you go in, you pick the various different pieces of data that you're willing to share. Those, that data is architected to actually be stored specifically on the handset. There's an important reason for that. We do not store it in a massive database. The value of data is growing up 35 to 40% a year. The reason is, is because the data is getting increasingly more personal. So we, while we all talk about using the blockchain to streamline the transaction, no one's talking about using the blockchain to actually remove the security threat around, kind of around how data is being hacked. The problem with it is because we talk about data lakes as a currency. Your data lake is about to be the single biggest liability on your P&L uh, in the next six months. And so it's baffling to me that we're buying DMPs at five plus billion dollars in the market because you're basically moving the liability over the fence to someone else. So this becomes the question is like, okay, um, how do you as an Oracle, a Salesforce, a LiveRamp, a uh, Kachava, any of these various companies, if you are sitting on this asset today of billions of devices or d billions of personas, how do you make it compliant in the future? Every single major DMP in the world is going to be buying a consent management solution over the next 12 months. The problem is, is there aren't any. LiveRamp bought one about six weeks ago. It's tiny. Um, so this is the challenge, is that we all have a dependency to kind of get this figured out. And I think this is where you're going to see the most amount of innovation going forward. So, you know, when we talk, uh, when I'll just kind of quickly go back to the application, um, because I know we're running out of time. So again, uh, if you download this application today, you can go into the application uh, you can pick and choose the various different pieces that you would actually be willing and, and likely to share. That data, as I mentioned, is architected to stay with you at the handset level. You can toggle these on and off um, as you so choose. There's two different uh, monetization engines associated to that. Should a brand or a platform want to actually passively buy this data from you, they can. Important to note is that they're actually not buying it from Killy. They're actually buying it directly from you as the consumer. It's a one-by-one -one transaction. So if you're buying 50,000 fully qualified females in New York, that's 50,000 independent transactions that are actually taking place in the background. The difference, though, is that that transaction or that record of consent is actually what we're storing. And so as a consequence of that, is should any regulator come to you or anybody say, where is the explicit consent that you're actually getting for this data? We can actually point to that. Um, it, I think one of the things that's important about this is that um, we'll hear this a lot over the next kind of six to eight months as well, is your data is valuable. You should get paid for it. That's a very hollow kind of argument, in our opinion, because the reality is, is it's true. You know, the cliche is data is the new oil, but the reality is, is that data is yours. You should control it. The problem is, is that there's no tools in the market to allow that to happen. We're trying to create those tools to allow it to happen. We incent the user to actually take back control, that, take back control of their data. And the reason that we do that is, unfortunately, in all of our testing and all of our user groups, People care more about money than they do about privacy. This is just the reality. And consumers generally don't have an understanding as to how their data is being used or how often it's being used or what it's worth. When you tell them that their data is worth $20 a month in Facebook or $500 a month, people start to get very active very quickly. So I think for us is that we do actually compensate the user um, if you want insights as to actually what they're doing, if you want to buy data passively from the consumer, we will pay you in cash. Um, there's an important point of that we don't pay in crypto. Uh, there's a couple reasons. One is uh, there's been lots of discussion around uh, the current the cryptocurrency holding its holding its value. I think over the last 12 months we've seen the challenges with that. Um, secondly, it's tough to scale a product when you're focusing specifically on coin. Um, you're having to teach token mechanics. How do you actually get in and out of an actual system? Um, there's a whole bunch of different things to do that. And we felt that this is a ubiquitous problem that transcends media and martech. Um, if you actually go into a crypto exchange, what do you have to do? KYC. Uh, like, so all these various different companies have a different kind of identity hurdle that they have to jump through. So what we're trying to do is actually put you behind um, your own private wall. Once you have that, 
it's up to you to decide what you want to do with it. Should you then decide to sell it, that's up to you. I don't redeem coupons. So, you know, as an example, like we talk about this is that, you know, coupons is a market today where you can clip them, you can redeem. Well, that's one functionality, but that only represents a very small percentage of the population. We think increasingly going forward with the data underneath an individual's control that things like authentication into a platform like a Facebook, like a Twitter, et cetera, where you actually have visibility and control over that data is actually where it's going to go. One of the things that's important that you all know is that as a byproduct of all the privacy regulation that's coming down is data needs to be portable. So for the first time in basically in history, the walled gardens won't be walled anymore. Technically, the ability for you as a consumer to move your data around, the challenge is, is that there's nowhere to actually put it. So I, I think you're going to see a ton of innovation in the space. Uh, for us uh, at Freckle with the product Killy, um, we've got a pretty ambitious plan to try to build this ubiquitous framework to basically allow every company in this room that's actually building a blockchain product for us to feed a consent layer, a consented consumer uh, into that ecosystem. Thanks. Any other questions? One more. Yeah, so the way we do it is actually, um, if you had an insertion order, we'll simplistically just use round numbers. Uh, if you were looking for a specific combination of data that equals a dollar, for instance, uh, you would expose that to the ecosystem, the handset's query into the insertion order literally one by one. When there's a validation and a match to that data, there's literally a, a reconciliation and a transaction that happens. So if we were looking for a qualified female, it would pass Shaylee, it would pass me, it would go to the next person, there'd be a transaction, and then you draw down the insertion order until you've actually completed the order. And I think this is another important piece, is that one of the things that we struggled with at the beginning was, when we talked in a lot of the conversations, it's been about CFOs don't want to deal with tokens. Well, you also can't go to Procter & Gamble and say, hey, you got to rip out your entire architecture and every other platform you've been using for the last 10 years and take a bet on us as a new company. 
so we were trying to figure out like how do we actually move the data into platforms that already exist so how do we move it into a Google how do we move it into a, into a DSP how do we move it into a DMB but also kind of provide that kind of compliant layer to it so um, from a platform perspective or from a brand perspective you're, you're getting the same data that you normally would get the difference here is that we're able to tie the consent layer underneath it so that's how we We had a really romantic approach to this at the beginning where like everybody cares about privacy and then literally when we went through all the user testing it was basically like uh, all the users were increasingly saying yes like um, I care less about the privacy I care more about how do I actually get more in return for my data um, so um, I think the thing about that is I agree about the intent piece um, we would yeah what we found is that the most progressive brands, at least that we've been talking to, so the CMO is the person that is making decisions around a lot of these things. It's increasingly becoming less of just a CMO decision. It's a legal decision, right? So moving forward, if you're a CPG brand and you are using data that does not have a consent trail associated to it, be prepared to be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Be prepared, because that's, that's what's gonna happen. If they're gonna put you on the front page of the journal for having videos next to jihad, like if you're selling tied to individuals on non-compliant data, you're asking for trouble with this. And so I think what we've seen in the market is that if the compliance angle wasn't there, maybe there's no incentive to change, right? But the, the compliance component is the incentive to change. And if you're about to experience a supply crunch, which everybody in this room is, and that's not fantasy, you just have to benchmark it against Europe. If any of you guys have operations in Europe or even looking at the DMP, like you're seeing 20 to 30% drops in supplies in those markets. We saw 100 plus companies leave, the, leave Europe. How many of those companies are based out of California? The majority. So like this stuff is all gonna kind of happen. So I think the consent piece, the consent and the compliance piece is really the driver. And I think what we find is that people are like, hey, like, how do you get more of this? Like, we need to start underpinning our, our decisions with this compliant data. 